Welcome to the Redbeard Embodiment Podcast. I am your host, Alex Green, and I'm on a mission to bring the power of embodiment to people all around the world. In this podcast, we explore how embodiment practices, trauma healing, and knowledge about the human nervous system can help us find our ground, discover new sources of meaning, and create connection in an ever-changing world. The deepest change is it body change. All right. Awesome. Good morning, everybody. Um, I am Alex Green, and I'm here in Boulder, Colorado, like I always am. And I am uh, connecting today with Jenny Hayes. Jenny is in uh, Madison, Wisconsin, where I used to live, and that's where, where uh, we spent some time together there. And um, Jenny and I are going to be talking about Somatic experiencing, something that we both share uh, in our in our practices, and we'll talk about that. And then uh, a special focus on wilderness therapy, uh, which is a, a, a big component of Jenny's uh, powerful work. So uh, just a little bit about Jenny specifically. So she is a licensed clinical social worker, uh, somatic experiencing practitioner, EMDR practitioner, yoga teacher, probably a bunch of other things by now uh, in, in her training and career. And she, uh, owns and runs a private practice called wandering within wellness, uh, based out of the Corey arts building in West Madison. Uh, and let's see. So Jenny, you and I met, uh, in, I think it was 2014 when yeah. our, when our somatic experiencing cohort began, uh, in St. Paul, I don't think we knew one another until we met at the training, but we, we had those two years in St. Paul and then for our final advanced year. Um, and so we were, you know, there, I think there was maybe one other or a couple other Wisconsin based, uh, SEPs, but not many, we were pretty early. Um, and then, you know, you had the inspiration to, Hey, let's bring a, let's bring a, a cohort, a somatic experiencing teacher to Madison. So we, we kind of worked together to find a D uh, and, and get the first um, program launched in, in, in Madison in 2019. And now, now you're into the second one. Isn't that true? Yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. wrapped up this past weekend, beginning year module three. So there's the first, the next cohort wrapped up the first year. So it was exciting. It's grown. It's, yeah. it's, so it's growing and expanding and, and, yeah. And so, yeah, now I think, you know, the way and I, the way, what, what I remember is you and I were sitting around and thinking, you know, this is really great. You know, we were all jazzed about our work and, uh, and, uh, but like we need more of us. And so, and so, uh, somehow that, that was able to happen, which was great. Um, anyway, so Jenny, thank you so much for uh, taking time to be here today. Yeah, this is great. Thanks for having me. It's good to awesome. see you. Yeah. Good to see you too. Um, let's, uh, you know, so I want to talk about SE. I want to talk about your practice. I want to talk about the, the wilderness component, which is such an interest of mine, uh, uh, to hear, to hear from you and, in, in, in what, and how, how that weaves in, uh, and, and some other things, but I wonder if we could just kind of go into, uh, you know, just your own background, you know, going back into your, you know, formative years or, 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 or what are the, the influences that led you to, um, uh, to therapy and, and, and yoga and, and ultimately somatic therapies. Um, what's your, what's your story? Yeah, sure. Um, well, you know, I think, I think a, a big piece of the equation here is I grew up in a really large family. So I'm the 12th kid in a family of 15 kiddos. And I think just naturally growing up in community and really just experiencing what that means like, to right. have, what it means to have mentors within your family that are different ages, going through different life experiences. You right. know, so you're seeing things like childbirth among your siblings and marriages and some of the hardships in life just kind of happening in the fabric of life right. around you and in the vastness of this rich community. So right. as a kid who was always pretty sensitive and an observer, I was just curious you know, just like curious about all these things going on and how it's all connected. And just, I think always have had an affinity for people mm. and for like the joys and the sorrows of humanity and just how that arise. Mm. And just, I don't know. I think 
I think curiosity is the main culprit here, actually. I think okay. I just like, what's going on? You were, you were too curious. You had to know more. You know, yeah. Like, where does this come from? And where does it go to? And how does it all work together? And right. um, I think that was my initial curiosity. Um, yeah. 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 Is, is, and I don't, uh, where, where did you grow up? In Wisconsin or somewhere else? No, I grew up in Wisconsin, just outside mm -hmm. of Milwaukee. Okay. Yeah. 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 Most and so people assume I grew up like on a farm or something. They hear large family, and you know, yeah, I that's, grew up I, actually in a in a pretty urban area. And um, you know, my family had a family business, and you know, everyone amazing. Lived that's so funny. Family. That's a part of your story I didn't know. My my mom is one of eleven, and and I thought oh. that was a big family, but but twelfth out of fifteen. Wow, that is uh mm -hmm. that is a that is a large family. That's great. Yeah. 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 Um, and so, you know, I know, and I think you did your, did you do your psychotherapy? Did you do your training in, at UW, Madison? Yeah, yeah. So I did my yeah. undergrad actually in La Crosse and then my graduate okay. studies in Madison. Got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Um, in terms of, you know, so, so, so you were curious about humans and so um, uh, was, was psychotherapy just an obvious fit um, in terms of, uh, uh that yeah. approach or? Yeah. You know, I remember sitting in a high school psychology class and, you know, um, I even have some friends who still remember this moment where I just sat back and I was like, this is it. This is it. Like, yeah. okay, this is how you do this whole studying of humans thing, you know? So um, I just, I leaned into it. And I think as I went along, you know, psychotherapy became just something that continued to highlight itself. Right. I think the journey to, you know, but the first part of my career was with children and mm. I worked primarily with kiddos who had a trauma background. And mm. um, I would say that's where I started to recognize the importance of the body. Okay. And okay. the fact that, you know, kids can verbalize a lot but also their behaviors are the way that they're communicating so much mm. of what's going on. And I see. my curiosity started to shift from this mind-based way of understanding people into yeah. much more of a curiosity about what's going on inside there. You know, like mm. what, what's the story that doesn't quite have words yet or mm. what, what's happening and where is it landing? And I really feel like my work with kids started to introduce that to me. Yeah. 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 What, um, and, and so then what led you specifically to, you know, the SE training? I mean, I, you know, there's Hakomi, there's sensory motor psychotherapy. Yeah. Um, how did you sort of, um, as you be, it sounds like you became curious in the embodied aspects of of trauma or even just people. Um, yeah. What, what kind of pulled you in towards SE specifically? Yeah. You know, I, I actually didn't know a whole lot about it. Um, and then at one point I had um, a book in my house. I, I still, to this day, don't know how the heck it got in my house, but it was Peter Levine's healing trauma. And it was this small little book. And I remember being pregnant with my oldest son and mm. sitting on the couch and reading it. And as I was reading it, things started happening inside of me. I remember turning to my husband and being like, I, I don't, I'm going to close this book right now because right. things are happening and I don't know what's happening, but this, this feels really powerful. And I, I think something in me knew, Hey, maybe now in life, isn't the time to open this book and, and right. take the journey. But um, after my son was born, you know, and in those days of, breastfeeding and rocking and being with and the slowing down of life. Um, you know, I started to read more of Peter's work and in an unspoken voice, mm. I started to really dive into it. And again, I got those experiences in my own body of like something's happening inside mm. as I'm reading this. And it felt like tectonic plates in my self were mm. shifting. Right. Um, mm. And I just knew that there was something here. Like it felt, something felt like home. Something mm. felt like it landed. And um, 
I, you know, the, the curiosity was there again, as it always has been. And so I just kept leaning in and, yeah. and I found my way there. And, and I think that's when we met in St. Paul. Right. Yeah. It's funny. It was, it was in, it was in an unspoken voice also for me also. I don't, I don't really know how I came across it, but I did. And then um, it just, it spoke to a lot of things that I was kind of seeing in body work where, you know, where, you know, as somebody relaxed, some, you know, some movement might start to express, but along, you know, you know, but along with that movement, there might be, you know, a memory or, a, or, a, or, a, or something. And, 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 and when I went, when I went to St. Paul, you know, it was funny because I, I got, I read the book and I was like, wow, that seems like a really great explanatory model, but I couldn't figure out the book didn't explain at all. Like, how the therapy works. It was just sort of like the, this thing, these were humans are animals. This is what happened. Yeah. And I was like, but like how I don't get how. And so it was funny. I went to the St. Paul training and I didn't think I was going to do everything. I was just like, well, I'm going to go just, I'm going to go to the four day module one at a, at least I'll know sort of kind of how it works. And that was like, that was like, that was as, as far as my curiosity went at that point. Um, but anyway, I was blown away enough um, to, yeah. to, to be in for the whole ride. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 That's yeah. why we're doing that. Well, so let's, you know, for, for people who are listening, who, um, you know, SE is somatic experiencing something I talk about, not infrequently, you know, on this podcast. Um, but, but, you know, for somebody who doesn't know what it is at all, let, let's take a moment just to give just a little bit of a, uh, you know, what it is. And, and let's, let's have you do that. What, you know, imagine, you know, you're with a, uh, a new client and they, and, and you're going to explain doing uh, that uh, one thing you'd like to include as a somatic experiencing lens or something. Well, what's, what's your, you know, minute or two explanation of, you know, what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think keeping it to a minute or two is always a little tricky, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> That's here. true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think that, you know, I like to talk about it in terms of slowing down so that mm -hmm. we can hear the narrative of the body, mm -hmm. that when we go through life, we're going through experiences and our mind is such an important part of that journey, but that, you know, there's a way in which our body is having an experience and, you know, mm -hmm. pending the degree to which something is happening in our life, that our body's brilliant and it's going to respond in absolutely brilliant ways and some of those ways are designed to keep us safe and protect us and uh, mm. to keep some sense of balance so we can keep moving forward but that those pieces that maybe didn't have an opportunity to be tended to that um, needed to be protected also have a really important part of the picture that helps us to move forward in a way where we can feel the fullness of life Sometimes there's ways that the things that happen can uh, narrow our experience as humans. And mm. in order to have the fullness of our life force, it's really important to slow down and to get curious about um, what the body's narrative is around what it's gone through and how can we support it to move through whatever cycles it needs to that it didn't have an opportunity to. Yeah. Um, to allow for that. And, yeah. you know, I think that slowing down in the culture that we live in is a really challenging thing to do um, in, in this fast paced world. And so to create and carve out spaces where there can be enough relational safety mm. and a pace that allows for that story to come forward. And with it, sometimes, you know, some some challenging aspects of the story and yeah. how can we, how can we use somatic skills to create the support, the container and the nurturing um, that we need in order to, to digest and metabolize what didn't have an opportunity to, to do. Mm. Um, mm. So I like that's, that. That's a bit yeah. of it. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, you know, it's funny cause I, you know, when I'm, when I'm talking with new, folks and and you know i often end up saying conveying it's like well it's not that there's not talking there is talking we're talking yeah. about 
you know, your nervous system, your experience of sensation, even how that connects to emotion, you know, you know, so it's not that there's not talking, but there's also very much not only talking, there's sort of something else that's very much there. Um, how, how would you, you know, again, for somebody trying to get the feeling of, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, I love that the body narrative and, and but, but when we're, when we're in a slowed down, I love that phrase, SE session, what does it mean to, um, you know, that it's, we're not just having a conversation. We're also, we're also attuning and connecting to uh, sensation and the body felt sense. And well, well, how do you kind of describe that, that piece of it? Yeah. You know, sometimes I, I talk about it like relearning. It, it can feel like a foreign language that's actually like deeply embedded that we're just uncovering again to use language that describes uh. what's happening inside the body. And so, uh -huh. you know, I'll talk about it in terms of like, there might be a moment where you're telling me a story about work and I might notice that things are lighting up all over the place uh -huh. right, in your body. And, and if we don't slow down, we miss an opportunity. And so it might just be, Hey, can we pause here? Can we take mm. a moment? Yeah. You know, it seems like something's happening. As you're right. talking about this, you know, where might that be in your body? You yeah. Know? When, when you say, you know, you're, is somebody sharing and now they're talking about something about work and things are lighting up all over the place and you can perceive that. Well, what, what's, what's the kind of, what are some of the ways yeah. that you might perceive somebody's, you know, a nervous system changing or there's something active um, that you want to linger on to, to bring out somatically? What, what, what's the kind of thing you might observe? Yeah, so, you know, I'm looking for, you know, I think this is like in the, in the somatic training, what, what they really talk about is developing your SEIs, right? Uh. And, you know, looking for things like I'll often see changes in how someone's eyes look, whether that be the brightness or the way in which they're, um, presenting, you know, sometimes it can be a, a leaning in of posture. Sometimes there's lots of movement in the hands that are showing up. Sometimes the breathing, right. you know, you can sense a breathing or um, mm. oftentimes bracing patterns. So maybe a mm. tightening in the arms or, you know, a change in the tone of voice. Um, you know, mm. sometimes seeing, you know, color changes on the face and the skin, right. um, you know, and uh, I think, you know, really helping people to recognize like, oh, some, yeah, like when we slow down, it's like, oh my gosh, yeah, I just went from like zero to 20 in like 10 seconds talking about this thing and everything in my, you know, chemistry here has changed. And so, right. um, you know, it's also using my body as a, as a resource, right? So when you're in the resonance mm -hmm. with a client, sometimes it's actually really subtle. Maybe it's mm -hmm. something that I'm noticing that's happening in the resonance that has me changing posture or position or a sense of more activation in the room or a sense where everything goes really quiet and it feels like mm -hmm. maybe a little foggy, right? Like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. sometimes in that, you know, it's questioning, like, I'm sensing something in the room, and I'm wondering if you might mm. be feeling a quality in here. Right. Um, and, and so it, it shows up in a lot of different ways. And I think as I've done SE longer, um, fine tuning the nuance in that has become much more available to me. Yeah, no, I, I love that. Well, one, one of my favorite things is like, um, is, is, is just, you know, when we do slow down and we pay attention, it's always amazing with clients how much there is to notice. And it's like my, an example I often use is, is, is doing, you know, just a couple of breaths. And, you know, a lot of us are used to, you know, we might go to a, a yoga class for, for 50 minutes, we've been doing Ujjaya breathing or something, mm -hmm. you know, which is, you know, every, so you would think, okay, hopefully if I've done 45 minutes of meditation or, you know, of a special breathing, I would hope I would feel something. But what I like to point out in an SC session is like, okay, well, we may pause, you know, just, you know, orient ground, you know, sort of the big, and then, you know, let's just take a couple easy breaths, just a nice slow breath in, easy breath out, do it at your speed. And then I, and then I, and this is my, how I start with a lot of people. And I say, and then, and then just notice for yourself, like, did your body kind of like those breaths or was it a little stressful or was it just neutral? What was the feeling? And 
is there any change afterwards? Uh, you know, or or the things the same? You know, what what's you know, you just did three breaths. Now what are you noticing? Mm -hmm. And almost inevitably, I mean, it's only three breaths, and we yeah. breathe all day long. But somehow, by doing something a little slower, mm -hmm. by paying attention to the cause and effect. So I did something breathing in this case, and then I'm watching, you know, tracking as we call it in SE. Mm -hmm how much there is to observe. And, and so I think that that like people quickly, what I like about SE is that it's, it is a little hard to explain, but as soon as you get into it, yeah. it's super intuitive. People right. love noticing right. sensations in right. their body right. and making connections. It becomes so easy in a way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's so many, what I love about SE is just how many doorways in there mm. are. You know, yeah. so many different ways you can lean into it. And mm -hmm. if somebody isn't finding, you know, SE to be their jam, which, hey, that right. happens too, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, but there's usually a doorway that speaks to them, you uh -huh. know? And so maybe the doorway is, you know, feeling a squishy ball, you know, and feeling sensation out here, mm. you know, before we go here. Right, right. You know? And so it's so, and, and, um, I love that example of just taking the breaths, right? Of noticing the nuance of the change so mm. presently when it slows down mm. that we're bypassing most of the day, right? Right. Like we're overlooking. Up, right. But right. Uh, there's so much richness in it when you get familiar mm. with it and you form a relationship. Yeah. Super cool. Well, so here's a question for you because, you know, I've lived in Colorado. So, you know, you and I haven't been able to connect one. Well, you know, the pandemic, right? So it's, it's been a while. So here's, here, here's a question that I have for you is it's, you know, we are what, uh, I don't know, seven years past our, you know, training or whatever, you know, when we, when we became SCPs. And, uh, and so I'm curious for you, like what, um, at this stage of your practice, you know, it, um, what are some of the key SE principles or, um, or frameworks that, that, you know, that you find yourself leaning into a lot? I mean, you're already referencing some through attunement and slowing down, mm -hmm. but, but, um, yeah, what other sort of aspects of SE do you, you know, what's different about how you're working now than, you know, six, seven years ago? Maybe that's a better question. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. I think, um, you know, I would say that what's much more present for me now is recognizing the power of resourcing and mm -hmm. reaching for the elements that support the system. You know, I think sometimes I, you know, I talk to clients about, and, you know, I remind myself about this, that you know, it's like if you were to be standing at a trailhead and you look one way and it's, you know, it's a path that has a lot of like craggy, like rock and slimy things. And you got to kind of crawl over boulders and it's going to be a little dark and mucky and intense. And right. you know, you're not quite sure if you have the right footwear because it's a little dicey in there. Right. And but but there's a feeling of like, I got to go through there. Right. To get yeah. to the other side. And then, you know, you look at the other trail and you notice it's this prairie with all of these butterflies and, you know, these sweet flowers. And, you know, and the reality is that you actually can get to the other side of the trail by choosing either of those. And I think earlier in my in my career and in the work, I, I felt like in order to to really work with what needed to be supported, I had to go down that that path towards towards the intensity, towards the the the, the, um, the magnetic pull of the trauma vortex. Really, right? The trauma vortex and the counter vortex are terms in SE, as right. you know, and one speaks to you know, where a lot of the activation and, and the woundedness lie and the other speaks to, you know, the very elements that help us have the capacity to turn towards some of those pieces. And I think in my, in the way I work now, I spend a lot more time in the prairie, you know, I, mm. I'm spending a lot more time gathering the flowers and the resources and, um, really deepening the, uh, 
stabilizing of the system. And um, in our culture, I think in the world we live in, sometimes it's like you get in there, you get it done, you move quick, come on, heal that on up. And I think that we're, we're not as uh, supported to turn into, turn toward rather the, the awe and the beauty and the wonder and the very things that allow our capacity to have the ripest conditions for healing. And so I would say it's the slowing down and the resourcing that, um, that feel really powerful. And, and I think also that idea of titrating, you know, like moving towards that trauma vortex, but in a very titrated, well-resourced way. Um, and, and that feels like it's really been pivotal. And also I think a part of where I've leaned into the ecotherapy side of things, because it feels like a very strong resource, rich, area of the work. Um, I, I love that. Yeah, no, that, that framing is, you know, it's so beautifully said and, and I resonate with it so much too. Um, and I, I feel like I just keep, I like, like I, you know, we learned that it's like, I feel like there's just been these stages where I learned it more and more powerfully where, where, you know, I, I sometimes like Steve Hoskinson's, I did one of my trainings with him and he, and he calls the counter vortex blue. So, you know, yeah. just arbitrary and, and, and vortex red. So blue and red. And, and so just this idea of supporting and nurturing blue or finding the blue, even within a, a, a red or a, a active activating situation. And, and, I I just year by year I feel like I I come to that that belief more and more it and it's like to the extent that we can um uh get the collaboration with our clients that 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 the that that doing a lot of work around um uh, uh that that of fi- of establishing resource connecting feeling the uh, you know, reestablishing the ability to feel pleasure, to feel expansion, to re- to to be able to imagine the things that are fulfilling and nurturing, and to take those in. And from one view, that can sort of feel like, pos- you know, toxic positivity or or um, or bypassing or something. But but what I like to explain is that no, we're really building up our neurobiological capacity to experience expansion. And then it's not as though there's, you know, there's that there's not value in processing the activation and the trauma. But if you, if there's first this, you know, big, if we got a good ball of steam or, you know, this got a lot of the blue resource energy, it's so much easier and so much pleasurable. And it's, and it's always amazing how something that seemed like it was going to be like the scariest, nastiest, thing to have to work through by the time if there's no rush to get there and you're coming in with a lot of resource you know it can it can unfold so so undramatically sometimes it's at least it's at least how i'm experiencing it um i wonder what you think yeah absolutely absolutely and i think you know i think about um you know, if we think about leaning into the resource, like really, truly filling up that backpack, it's like you might then be on the trail that's a little bit more um, challenging. And remember that you have a flower in your backpack and that just by rubbing it, something changes, right? Like, just like, hey, this this helps me be here. This helps uh-huh. me be here. And I think when we bring the stress chemistry down, Right. When we're able to bring the stress chemistry down in the body, we're mm. able to stay online enough to metabolize the pieces that mm. are more challenging. Mm. But if our stress chemistry is so high, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we run the risk of, you know, utilizing the very same protective mechanisms and um, patterns of activation in the body that had to keep us safe in the first place. And so I really value the way that I like the blue. That's fun. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I really value how the stress chemistry gets to be lowered so that we can really be there in the work in a more safe way. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, I, it's funny. I, I have a, a, a somewhat re- a ti- somewhat timely example that was a little powerful. I'll just speak in very yeah. broad terms, but it was working with someone and, um, you know, with a, with a fairly, um, with a, uh, with a birth trauma, have medical, you know, um, a very, uh, challenging birth, almost, you know, almost dying and things like that. Um, and then set this, you know, in a way then had a ripple effect through the, you know, that intensity of, a uh, of a birth trauma had a significant effect, effect on, on going forward. Um, and, 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 and something interesting came up in one uh, conversation where we track, where we tracked back somatically. And this person doesn't have a conscious memory of that time, but, a, but a felt certainly knows the story and there's a felt sense and knows some of the medical details of the life-saving measures and things like that. And <clears throat> When we, we did that and slow, you know, we kind of tracked back and, and held it in a very slow way. And, and something came forward from the, from the client where, um, where they recognized, um, something that they had never really thought about was the over and aboveness that one of the physicians, uh, did that wasn't automatic and, and somehow uh, feeling into that that this sort of human element, somehow this person had, um, the, the physician had done beyond the call of duty and it had turned and, and that had made the difference. And, and that was an overlooked sort of part of the narrative yet, yet when connected to just created this enormous expansion, um, uh, around the situation. So that one just sort of came to mind as sort of, again, so this idea of, you know, even very difficult situations, car accidents, it's like, you know, are there, are, are there, you know, where's the blue, where's the, where's the resource even within, within challenge, um, right. is something that I think about. Right. And I love that. I love that example. And I would imagine, I, I don't know, I mean, you were in the, in that resonance, but I would imagine, you know, the, the other work that needed to be looked at, you know, mm-hmm. was much more manageable because that resource was there to lean into. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's the beauty of this work. I mean, what a, what a, what an honor, you know, I think mm-hmm. it's such an honor to be in presence with, mm-hmm. um, clients who are bringing these stories and uh, trusting in that space, right, for their system to be held and supported and, uh, uh, yeah, I just listening to your story, I felt touched in that way of, you mm. know, what a beautiful thing that, that someone knew that there was this space that they could enter mm. into and to even explore that that piece that might have been missing was there all along. And how cool, right? Like, yeah, that's so cool. I love that. It, yeah. Um. So. Um. So, I'd love to hear a little bit about you know, of about wandering within wellness and and you know you've been um, in group practices for a while and and I think you're yeah. newly. This is a new venture, and I'd love to hear. Uh, uh, the guy, the, the guiding vision, what's, what's, uh, what's, um, what's happening there? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's bringing together a few different areas that have been existing, uh, kind of on their own in different spheres, um, Uh under one umbrella. And, you know, I'm still doing quite a bit of somatic experiencing, uh, psychotherapy based sessions, but another avenue of the practice is really starting to delve more into ecotherapy groups and retreats. Um, I've done retreats for a few years now, um, primarily with other therapists or others in the caretaking professions and really Mm -hmm. creating opportunities to work um, on you know, finding ways to really nourish nervous systems that are definitely extending to, you know, broaden out to humanity in really powerful ways. And how do we slow down and nourish and take time mm. to receive the vital nutrients that are needed to continue mm. to work? Mm. Um, so that's the retreat side of things. And that's, it's just, been, it's been fun and it's been great to collaborate with, you know, other people uh, to do retreats and 
Um, so that's that's been exciting. And I think the ecotherapy side of things is a little bit newer, uh -huh. newer and probably the oldest at the same time, right? Like, right, right. Like um, something that's been in my life for a very long time, well before I knew what it was or what to call it or why it felt important. And mm. uh, now putting language around something that's been really meaningful for a long time and wanting to offer that and create more space and opportunity for that. Um, Super cool. So, so yeah, I'd love to hear, um, I guess I have a couple thoughts. One is, uh, like, you know, did you gravitate to any particular, did, did you, is, have you done any specific study around that? Is there any model that you've really sort of appreciated how they frame things or maybe that was just start with that question. Just if you've yeah. kind of pursued some training in that direction. Definitely. I've definitely pursued some training. I've done some ecotherapy certification through the earth body Institute and okay. Um, the Kamana program through the Wilderness Awareness School when that was still, um, when the program was still up and running, which is more of like a naturalist training. Uh, okay. I would say my hero, like I, I was listening to her this morning just because anytime I listen to her, something in my being lights up and everything and it just something really magical happens. But um, Joanna Macy and the work that, you know, reconnects is, um, really been a teacher of mine and mm. you know i highly encourage anyone who's interested in this beautiful earth that we're living on and sustainability and the life-giving nourishment of being in a reciprocal relationship with it to turn mm. towards her work she's really inspiring and, um so i would say reading you know a lot a, a lot of her writings have touched me deeply and mm. um have given language again around something that's been so felt for so long. And yeah. I really found a groundedness in finding her work. Right. Yeah. I love, I love that term reciprocal relationship. Um, and uh, unpack that a little bit. What's, yeah. what does that mean? And, and, and why is it, and why is it important to tell us about that reciprocity? Yeah. 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 You know, I think, you know, for, you know, and I can just speak for myself that, you know, for a long time, it would be, oh, I'm having a hard day or I'm having a hard time. I'm going to go on a walk, you know, and I'm going to, you know, and surely I'm going to be in the forest and I'm going to get all these messages and now everything's, there's going to be meaning and I'm going to settle mm -hmm. and I'm going to, you know, and that was all true and it still is. Right. But I think that um, as I've really felt into, I think as I've done, you know, my own work and I've worked, you know, with people for so long in these really subtle and nuanced places, um, really recognizing that when I, you know, when I step, you know, into the natural world, I'm among many, many beings and mm. that we're all a part of this greater web of life and mm. that we, um, are here to support, nourish and listen and be in relationship with one another. And that, you know, when I go out now, it's really um, saying hello. It's asking for permission. It's mm. slowing down to notice if there's any way that I can support, you know, the trees or the plants around me. There's this uh, this way that, you know, there's there's me and there's you and we're here at the same time. And what a gift mm. to be here together mm. at the same time. Mm. But there's not, I think there was, you know, years past, there was more of a brazenness, right? Or there was more of a um, quality maybe of like taking, right? Or a uh -huh. quality of like getting, going there to get something. And now right. it's more of a, I want to go visit my friends mm. and I want to see how they're doing too. Mm. And I want to mm. slow down and I want to notice what they want me to see and mm. Mm. how I might be able to support that. And mm. when I'm hugging a tree, it's not, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm hugging you and you're making me feel better. It's like, hey, I'm in me and I'm feeling you and you. And like, mm. we're here together at the same time. And like, this mm. hug is as much for you as it is for me. And, um, you know, and it's it's been important for me to learn, you know, mm. 
the names of things, you know, like when you know something, when mm-hmm. you know, when you have a name for something, you, mm-hmm. uh, for me, it's, it's been like dandelions, my friend, you know, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. you like, know, you know more. It's know you, you, like, I, I don't, you wanna, don't like, overlook I as wanna, much. Yeah. 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 Like, it's just, you know, like Hawthorne is a teacher, you know, what mm-hmm. a guy, what a, mm-hmm. What an ally, you know? Mm. Um, so there's, it, it feels, it feels really beautiful. It's been, it's mm. been really beautiful. And I feel really um, invited to continue to talk about this with, with clients that are interested because, you know, I think there can be a great forgetting and it's important to have a great remembering. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, I love that phrase. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 And yeah, so I, I really I really like this idea of uh, creating spaces for relationships to be built in. Yeah, so so wonderful. I mean, you know, relationships you know, you look at you look at healing models for a person, you know, even within oneself, you know, like like you know, I like the I like the healing. I like the relationship model of IFS about healing relationships within within the person. But but then of course you know um, uh, you know so much of work and and therapy and psychotherapy often would you know is is about our connection with you know those close to us right you know our our friends or our family of origin. I mean so much of repair or um, or attending to is about is about relationships and in. Um, and I like, uh, I like how you're widening the framework, uh, uh, beyond people to, you know, our earth as, as habitat, but not in the abstract, but in the, in the specific of, um, the other beings and, um, that we can be, can be in relationship with in the way you're describing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Alex, this is reminding me, and I don't know if you'll remember this. I'll, yeah. I'll be intrigued if you do. Um, I don't remember at what point it was in our training, but there was yeah. one day in our training where uh, we were in a practice triad together. Right. I, re- I remember this, by the way. I know what okay. you're going to say. Yeah, okay. yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. And, um, and I remember, <laughs> I think you came in and it was just, um, I don't even know what we were learning about or what was happening, but I remembered you came in and you were just kind of like, we were landing as a group. You were talking yeah. about, you You were reading the news that morning or listening to something and you named that you were listening to how the great barrier reef was, was dying. Right. And I, I remembered just, it struck me so intensely. And yeah. I remembered being, I think, you know, the lender or the person that was the right. client and just going into a deep grief around that. And mm. I, I would say that that definitely landed in that curiosity cup of mine around, mm. Oh, like what happened back there? That right, right. the naming of that and the idea, it felt like something very connected, um, like just a grief that I, I didn't know existed for, for the earth and that mm. eco grief exploration mm. since then has been really yep. profound. And so in, in many ways, I, you know, I don't know if I have ever thanked you, but you know, I really do want to thank you. There was something really pivotal for me in you bringing that in that day at that time. And that my system had yeah. some capacity to work with that because of the healing nature of the work, but yeah, a moment. Oh. oh no! I know. I appreciate you that bringing it up, and no, I remembered too because, um, uh, because I think I think you know this was a shared resonance moment. Because I mean, you're right. We were on a break. Yeah. I happened to read the news. Yeah. I happened to read a depressing article about the Great Barrier Reef, you know, yeah. bleaching and you know something, you know, and 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 in a lot of a lot of days, sure, that would have bummed me out. But but there was something about being in the where we were, you know, we were paying so much attention to you know, impact. And, and it was just like, and so, you know, I think we started up our class again and then it was just sort of like a check-in and like, well, that's what was on my, 
field because I had just read this this thing. And and I and I remember how like, you know, how I was moved and you were moved and 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 and, and it's like I think it was because we were all slowed down in that way right. that we were observing what what that that impact was. But no, that really stood out as a as a pivotal thing in my own experience as well. So yeah, no, I, and we've never talked about it. So I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm glad you remember that. Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, what you talked about earlier about IFS in relation yeah. to the self is that, um, I think deepening relationship with self and trust in your capacity to show up for yourself is what leads to the deepening is a, is an element at least that leads to your capacity to deepen relationship with other right like if we're not in relationship with ourselves mm. it's really challenging to be an authentic and vulnerable and deep relationship with other mm. and and i think that's um you know it's been my experience that the deeper i've gone into that work you know individually the ability to deepen into that relationship Mm. Um, in the more than human world has only mm. Mm. much more deeply possibility. What, so cool. So, so with your clients um, and the retreats and um, what's, what's a, what's a way, you know, and I love that phrase, you know, there can be a forgetting, but there can be a great remembering um, which really resonates with me. I'm not going to go into the whole story, but like, but I, but that happened for like, you know, for, uh, I'll share it really briefly, but when, when I was a kid, um, my, my parents were divorced. And so we didn't live most of the time with my dad, but when we did, uh, everything was nature based, you know, for a period of our, and, and he, and he lived in beautiful places. He lived in, in, um, Vancouver Island and he lived in, in, in the, in the, in the Canadian Rockies for a period. And then he moved to Hawaii. And so I was growing up in the Midwest and, you know, living a good life and all that. And, uh, but then when I would visit, uh, my sister and I would visit my father, you know, we would just, you know, we would do a lot of immersive, uh, uh, nature experiences that were also sort of novel. And this is all around like age six, seven, eight, nine, you know, kind of in that range and a great awakening for me at some point as an adult was was to was to recognize how just deeply pivotal those times were for me and in ways that I forgot you know I went on to do education and do other things but 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 I had a great remembering where where I where I remembered how how unbelievably connected to landscape and nature uh and how powerful how powerful those times were for me and, and you know I had sort of you know kind of forgotten it and then I and then brought it forward again so, so I, re so that's sort of kind of part of why I resonate with that, that language. But so, 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 but I'd love to hear with your, your clients doing ecotherapy, like is, is, um, is some of it there in your office? Um, is that part of it? Is some of it uh, going out? Is it retreat based? I'd, I'd love to hear about that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think in terms of the office, there's, there's often invitations to orient to the natural world. Okay. You know, so inviting clients to position themselves in a way where they might be able to see out a window, um, and you know, work with nature as a as a possible resource. Yeah. And uh, you know, I and you know, there might be things in my office like feathers or you know things that they can touch or things that they can smell. Right. Um, you know, that brings brings that a bit more in. Um, mm you know, often invitations to talk about, you know, the natural world and places that are very special and really feeling into, you know, mm. the felt sense of that and what happens in the body when you think about that tree or that place or that moment with that crow, mm. uh, you know, and what happens inside mm. when that, when that pops up as something. Mm. Um, and then when it's in person, you know, I tend to really enjoy group work um, and lean more into group work. And I think that, um, you know, I think there's an element of, again, growing up in a big family where um, being in the group container and being in that, you know, that resonance is such a powerful space where being witnessed and being seen and, um, 
you know, being in, in shared moment with others can be so powerful. So in groups, it's, you know, often really slowing down to get in touch somatically so that we create the conditions for a deeper resonance. We create conditions where a deeper listening can happen. Mm. Um, there might be a very gentle and subtle question that we, that we take with us. Mm. Um, and, you know, really just allowing your senses to really guide you to, to feel the call maybe from a being and it might really surprise you, you know, it might be a stone, you know, it mm -hmm. might be, um, you know, it might be like where somebody's footprint went into mud and, and there's something about that that's just really mm. speaking to whatever that question is that you that you're holding in your heart as you're as you're walking forward. Mm. And it's, you know, invitations to get really curious about that, you know, and um, not in a way where our mind has to decide what it means, but in a way where we slow down to see what wants to arrive mm. and uh, recognizing that you know, our psyches are deeply connected to the psyches of the earth and mm. that the natural processes that we go through as humans are, the, are shared in, in the mm. more than human world. And that mm. there's grief and there's loss and there's expansion and there's joy and there's flow and there's stagnation. And there's mm. all of these things that we're sharing and that we can mirror that and we can be with that in a different way. Sometimes it's easier to, you know, to be with our own grief when we're seeing, you know, a leaf that's falling and something about that feels like, mm. well, that feels natural. Does the tree miss that leaf? I don't know. But, it, you know, something, something mm. about that feels, you know, it feels like it's in resonance with what I'm feeling right now. And, mm. um, you know, really recognizing that I think that, you know, when, you know, planetary wellness and our wellness is a really big part of the puzzle and moving forward in this life sustaining way. And mm. uh, how can we support each other in those processes? Mm. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah, well said. What um, I'm curious, uh, are there places um, that um, that you're so in terms of um, some of your retreats and and okay. um, are there are there places that you that you uh, return to are there places where you have a a connection or where you do a lot of this work um, now? Yeah, you know, I, there's a few spots. Um, I do a, a retreat at the Christine Center every year, uh -huh. and um, which is in is it outside of Eau Claire or something like yep, that? Yep, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yep. and it's just a beautiful, beautiful setting. And there's, uh, you know, I've had some really wonderful experiences there uh, many years ago. And one of the sisters there who had a big part to play in creating the trails uh, was somebody whose path I crossed at a time where it was really meaningful for me. And mm. going back and, and recognizing the the shared love for something and really honoring um, of the land that she, you can feel the touch of her in. Um, she's now mm -hmm. passed and I, it's, it's a beautiful place that, um, uh, that I, that, yeah, that just feels like home. It, it mm -hmm. feels really, really um, wonderful. I, I'd recommend they, they do many retreats. They're lovely to work with. Um, mm -hmm. and food is delicious. Um, <laughs> So, so I go there yearly and then okay. in terms of, you know, I, I like to do a lot of things pretty locally where it's accessible for people, you know? Uh -huh. I, um, so a lot of the conservancies around Madison and of course the yeah. Arboretum and, you know, Holy right. Wisdom Monastery, you know, there's yeah. just beautiful trails. And I think that, you know, it's also really important to recognize that sitting in your backyard. Uh -huh. Right, like it, you could sitting on a deck, having just one little patch of grass. There's so yeah. much happening in in that that yep. doesn't necessarily have to be going out uh, and, and going somewhere. But it's uh, yeah. How do how do we deepen relationship with with the places that we're walking by every day? Yeah. Uh, mm. But yeah, those are a few of my 
Mm. Thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. You know, it's funny that I had one, I, I, I had one sort of dramatic experience once where kind of relating to the, the difference of being, you know, having the direct connection to, you know, the natural world. And it was um, after I had been doing my bodywork private practice for a number of years at the Bedford Square building in, you know, in the near west side of Madison. And I loved my space. Um, and it was like an interior room. So there were no windows, which was sort of a downside. There were some upsides because it was kind of quiet and, you know, it was, you know, it was great. I loved the container of, of, uh, my space there. Um, but nevertheless, you couldn't argue, you wouldn't argue that, that unless you're consciously extending into the natural world, it's not sort of right there in your face. Right. Um, and then I can't remember what it was. I think somebody asked me, uh, I, I had reason to go out to Spring Green, Wisconsin, where about an hour west of Madison, where my where yeah. my dad and stepmom live, and they have a little meditation center there. And um, uh, and somebody had asked uh, for some body work. And so I went out there and it was like a fall day. It was like September, early September or something. And it was so beautiful just outside and there were no bugs or anything. So we were like, let's do this. Let's do this outside. Why not? Right. And it was like, not, there wasn't sun in the, so we just set up and, and no one was there. Like there was no one there. Um, so kind of, you know, rural, so, you know, pretty remote and uh, ended up doing, doing our session. I, and actually now that I'm remembering, it was a trade. So it was somebody I was practicing with. So we each did it. It took a few hours because we were we had enough time, and um, and and when I was the receiver, so when I was getting the well, even when I was the body worker, but especially when I was the receiver, it was just like it was just amazing, like like you know, to, for, you know, from the, the the breeze and the smells and and the subtle sounds and um, you know, in the in the in the and birds and um, and it wasn't like I was sitting there analyzing my environment. It was much more of just like wow, like there is such a, I'm, I'm in such a big space with so much going on and I'm, and I'm doing my, I'm receiving a body work session and yet I'm in relationship with, uh, all of this around me. And, and, and it was a little tough cause it was like, I would always, I would wish for always having that kind of a container, um, afterwards but you know i guess that's the good thing about memory right like like <laughs> yeah. you know one aspect of resourcing is these is these peak experiences and these memories which which can really which we can bring with us in a way but anyway i just i just i thought that, of that that one's in your resource backpack that one's in my resource backpack it's just hanging out there totally i yeah absolutely totally oh my gosh yeah. Yeah. Well, is, is there anything else that's, um, in terms of your, your, your ongoing unfolding and, and I'm, I love the integration of SE and the, and the wilderness perspective. And I'm, I'm learning some great terms, you know, this, um, the, I love the phrase more than human world and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and being in reciprocal relationship. Um, but yeah, anything else about sort of, you know, kind of as you, you're, yeah. you're unfolding, that's alive for you. Yeah, you know, it's I'm reflecting on something, you know, we yeah. had spoke, I don't know, maybe about a month ago, just uh, a bit about what we might want to talk about here. And yeah. I think at one point, you asked the question, like, I'm getting, I'm getting a whiff of maybe something a little spiritual. Jenny. And I remembered <laughs> at the moment, I was like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> and so I've been really sitting with that. You know, I've been, uh -huh. really, I've been really sitting with that, like, oh, I wonder what that resistance was. You know, right, 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 right. Really slow down, um, right. Because you know, to be completely fair, you know, that's a, that's an extremely important part of this process for, uh -huh. me, for uh -huh. how I arrive and how I walk in this world, and okay. for the leaning into this work and the we're never doing this work alone. You know, mm. we're never doing this work alone, and mm -hmm. so. There's a lot that I lean into, and there's a lot of support that um, I nourish in my life spiritually to be mm. walking in a way that I can be authentic as uh, yeah. as someone who holds space for healing. And right, 
there's always been something spiritual for me in the natural world ever since right. being a kiddo. You know, there was yep. just something about this greater web yep. that was always felt and that, you know, I was raised Catholic and gained a lot from that. And also mm. my experience mm. traveling the world and being in many different cultures and falling in love with different uh, world religions and the beauty and the sacredness mm. Um, mm. that there's so much that I honor and uh yeah so i found it funny that i was resistant to the to something that is actually so very nourishing in this right and well yeah and i think i think part of the way i phrased that question was you know for you um what's the what's what's the place is there a space for spirituality within within a psychotherapy uh context you know both in terms of uh, you know, as, as clients are navigating their, their interpersonal, intrapersonal and, and maybe, uh, 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 uh spiritual yeah. relationships. And I think that was a little bit the spirit of my question is how yeah. that, how you yeah. hold that in, 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 in your work. Yeah. So I'm hearing, and I, so I'm hearing a bit yeah. of your, yeah of what you carry with you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, um, you know, I think a friend of mine recently who's starting her own practice talked about looking into all of the definitions of psychology. She was doing a deep dive into all uh -huh. the definitions. And the one that really struck her was the study of soul. Mm. Um, psychology is the study of soul. And mm. Mm. I really, you know, you feel that in the work. Mm. Yeah. You know, you feel you feel that there's something really powerful and beautiful. And the more that um, I leave space for that in my own life without having to label it or call it any one thing, but mm. just the welcoming and the invitation and the being with, mm. um, you know, it's you can feel that in, in the room and, and welcoming and inviting a client's experience and uh, it it does feel like there's soul. There's a soulfulness in the room. Right? Yeah, great. soulfulness. I love that. I, it reminds me a little bit of um. Uh, I'm I'm guessing I'm 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 assuming you've read Res Menachem's uh, My Grandmother's Hands, and and my favorite thing about that book is that you know he, and he's an SEP and has done so much around um, looking at the embodiment of racism and. Um, and and I love that early in the book he does like this one page explanation of polyvagal theory and 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 what I like so much about it he kind of does a couple paragraphs that are sort of like the neurobiology and then he's like for our purposes I'm just going to call that the soul nerve yeah, yeah. and that was it it was like end of sentence and I was so impressed by that it was just sort of like like all right forget now we're from here on out we're it's the soul nerve and I was just like wow like what a great way to to just bring it into something you know tangible and felt so anyway it just i, I was thinking of that I yeah love that. yes yeah 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 no there's so much soul i think in in yeah we can't and and people can define soul differently that's fine there's a million different ways to relate right. to Absolutely. you know what that means for a person and um but yeah but to 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 acknowledge that that's uh you know part of you know that's that's who we're working with uh i think is is important you know yeah super cool um jenny this has been uh, a real pleasure it makes me realize you know even it might only be every couple of years that we that we get to hang talk to one another but i feel enriched every time that i do so thanks so much Absolutely. I'm so glad our paths crossed again. And, you know, yeah. again, thank you for uh, being the, another Scani in the room at that initial training. That's right. That's that right. Been, That's great right. To know you all. <laughs> yeah, likewise. Great. Awesome. Thank you, Jenny. All right. You take care. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Redbeard Embodiment Podcast. To learn more, visit us at redbeardsomatictherapy.com or send me an email at alex at redbeardsomatictherapy.com. 
If today's conversation resonated with you, help spread the word by subscribing and sharing with others. Hope to see you next time.